Now let's turn that concept around. Let's imagine instead of creating an acoustic vibration, a periodic perturbation of the material properties due to optical scattering, let me assume that I create a material with a periodic structure. I'm turning the problem around backwards, like a diffraction grating. So I've shown here a very typical diffraction grating where I've modulated the surface of the material with a particular wavelength, like capital lambda uh, sub g. And I could make this a square wave or a triangle wave or a sine wave. I don't really care what its shape is. The key is it's periodic. Uh, I've shown here that it has a finite size, L. We'll come back to that in a minute. For the moment, we're going to assume that L is very, very large, and we can treat everything as infinite in extent. Now, I, once again, send in a k-vector, a ray, a defined momentum, um, and I'm curious what directions of light I see out here. In this class, I don't care what the amplitude of those particular diffraction orders might be. I don't even care if some of those diffraction amplitudes are zero and some of them are not zero. Uh, I just want to know what the directions, what the ray angles are. Well, if I have a particular periodic structure here, and notice this period is in, uh, in the plane of the grating, then it seems, from our previous argument, that I must kick this momentum, I must provide new momentum to these photons up here. Uh, that is a momentum that's in the plane, uh, and it's, it's because that's the direction of my periodicity, my periodicity is in the plane. And that momentum is given by a k vector 2 pi over capital lambda, or a momentum h bar 2 pi over capital lambda. Now, it turns out that I don't really know if I provide one uh, such kick of momentum, or maybe uh, two or three or four. And uh, another way to think about that is imagine that for a minute this was a square wave. You know from your Fourier series that you can write a square wave as a sum of harmonics of this fundamental period. And those harmonics would have half the period, and a third the period, and a quarter the period, or spatial frequencies at two and three and four times the fundamental spatial frequency of two pi over this wavelength. It turns out almost any grating can generate those harmonics, and whether it does or not depends on the detailed physics that we won't do in this class. If this was a sinusoidal amplitude grating, it turns out it only generates the plus one and the minus one. But a sinusoidal phase grating, which is what I've shown here, could generate all the orders. But we don't care really right now, we just care where might the orders be, so we're going to assume that this grating could provide many orders. So now let's write our momentum diagram again, and this is enough to derive something called the grating equation, which is, what are my ray angles? Here is my incident k-vector. I'll draw that on a circle, and that circle has a radius of the possible amplitude of the k-vector, 2 pi over the optical wavelength. So all optical k-vectors must live on this circle, or if you'd like to multiply this by h-bar, this is the locus of possible photon momenta going forward in the material. I haven't shown backwards because that would be a circle across the bottom here. So my incident k-vector uh, lives right there. Now I've said uh, that due to momentum conservation, possible scattered waves exiting this grating must be related to the incident, uh, but they must have extra momentum only in the transverse direction, uh, and that extra k vector would be 2 pi over capital lambda, or multiples of it for the harmonics. So for example, I could have this incident k vector, and I could pick up this capital K right here, extra momentum, 2 pi over capital lambda, and I can see that my output diffracted angle uh, has to be right here. This is the k-vector of the output, and the angle relative to the axis would be right here. So the transverse, or x, part of k of this diffracted beam is the incident kx, right here, minus 1 capital K, 2 pi over this quantity. Um, if I instead added uh, an extra 
bit of momentum from this gradient. Then I would go this way, and I have, would have a wave that would have kx in plus one extra capital K, one photon, uh, one phonon momentum extra, and my plus one order is now here, and this is my diffracted angle. Or maybe I diffract off a harmonic of this grating. In the quantum picture, I pick up two phonon momenta, and it's so I, my transverse part of K would have two extra capital Ks, and I would start here with my incident and go one, two over, and now I could see a second diffraction order at this angle. And maybe a third if I can add plus 3k. And now you see if I add plus 4, my capital K, uh, 4, 4 capital K, my transverse momentum can't match onto any propagating mode. These modes are beyond cutoff, and they don't propagate, and I don't see them in the far field. So I see a limited set of diffraction orders here based on how many capital K I can add to my incident. And as I move my incident around, just imagine scrolling this angle, I will see all of my diffracted orders move, and I may see a new negative diffraction order show up here, and then maybe as I tilt this incident K vector over, my positive capital K3 here might go into cutoff and it would disappear. Right before it disappeared, it would be diffracting off at almost 90 degrees. And again, this doesn't tell us the amplitude of each of these orders, but it does tell us everything we need to know of where they go. So just by conservation of momentum, knowing that the grating can only provide momentum in the plane, because that's the direction uh, of this periodic structure, that the momentum it provides is h bar times 2 pi over the period, or multiples thereof, I can now know where these diffraction orders are, and I just have to do the geometry, because now it's just doing geometry off here. So let's write down uh, the first what uh, the, uh, the definition of the, uh, the relationship between the diffraction angle theta, that's just the angle from the normal here, um, and the transverse part of k. Well, it's the amplitude of the, of the possible k, the, the, the radius of the circle, times sine theta. This quantity right here is the hypotenuse times the sine of this angle. So that's easy. And for the mth diffraction order, m is this number, how many, uh, how many momenta did you pick up from the grating, um, it must be the incident, that's the quantity right here, just the, the x component, plus m times the capital capital K, what diffraction order uh, did, I dif did I diffracting into, what, what harmonic of this grading did I diffract, diffract off of, how many phonon momenta did I create or destroy. And I know the incident kx, because that's the same relationship, where now this is my incident angle theta, the angle right here. Um, I know what capital K is, it's 2 pi over lambda, divide out all the common terms, and this is the grading equation. What's my diffracted angle, theta m, in terms of my incident angle, theta n, uh, and I see the wavelength of light, the wavelength of the grating, and the grating order. You should be able to derive this. That's a, that's a fairly simple equation. You just need to be able to, to remember momentum conservation, and you get there.